Hello and welcome back to my channel. It has been a while. Wow. So much has happened. I moved here. I started university. Coronavirus, everything. But I thought I should make another video. I woke up this morning. There was snow outside. I went outside. I built a snowman. I saw some friends. And now I thought I will make this video that has been so highly requested. How do I become a ski instructor? What's the qualification process? How well do I need to be able to ski? What kit do I need? I know that this season for most people, isn't going to be a normal one. You're probably not going to get out to the mountains. But we can all be hopeful and you can start preparing yourself to get this qualification. And I'm going to give you some information today. I am a dual qualified, so ski and snowboard, level 2. SBSSVAL, which is the qualification board I did it with. Snow sport instructor. Um, I have worked two... two full seasons out in Austria teaching and I absolutely love my job so hopefully I can tell you today how you can fulfill this dream of yours. So when to do it? I was 18, I just finished my A-levels and I moved myself out to Austria for the first time. I did my qualification and I did my first season. Most resorts you go to you will have a lot of local kids or young adults um, who will work their weekends, their holidays, from 16 years old. So 16 is the minimum age to do your qualification and you can work from that age. However, in my resort, the average age of, you know, season heirs was around 24. So I lived with a lot of 23, 24, 25 year olds. Uh, a lot of people do do a ski season post uni, post apprenticeship, before going into, you know, whatever career path they want to do. Um, because it's fun and it's cool. Whatever age suits you, if you want to go to the mountains at 16 after your GCSEs or wherever you are in the world and have done some qualification and you can leave school, do it. I genuinely thought after my A-levels moving myself to Austria, this is the career path for me. This is what I'm going to do for years now. And I did do two full years and then Corona brought me back to the UK. Lots of plans destroyed, more of that in a minute, but I'm now at university. However, I will be going out and doing weeks where I can when this corona business is over. To kind of answer that first question, you can be any age. As long as you are fit, healthy, motivated, want to be in the mountains and spread good vibes. We had a ski instructor in our ski school, it was like 85. And he was a great instructor because he had been in the mountains all his life. Next question, where and how? So I can only really speak in terms of the SBS FAU. So S the Austrian system, the Salzburger Ski und Snowboard Verband, which is the Austrian system that I worked with. I will touch on Bayesi, however, I have only done this qualification board, so please don't come at me if I get something wrong about a different system. Just be nice, put it in the comments, help each other out. If you have done any qualification of any other sort, or if you've done SBSS foul and they've changed something, let us know. Share your information, it's all good. So if you're doing the SBSS FAU system, you're going to be doing it in the Salzburg region of Austria. They do Anwärter, that's the first level of qualification, I'll come back to that in a minute, in Flachau, Maria Alm, Salbach, or Caprun, auf dem Kitsteinhorn Glacier. I'm just throwing Austrian locations at you. Those are places you can do it. The Kitz Glacier, you can also do a July course, so a summer course, because it is snow all year round. I actually did a summer course. So that's pretty cool that you can actually qualify at any time of the year and then go do a ski season. And breathe. I'm coming down. I'm just very excited. There was snow. Did I mention there was snow? I did mention there was snow earlier. I am a happy child when there is snow on the ground. I'm going to jump in here with a little clip that uh, doesn't quite fit. For the SVSS file system, you need to be able to speak at least a relative level of German, Deutsch, Die Deutsche Sprache. I am half German, I was born in Germany, my mum is German, I am bilingual, so that is a huge help. The level is not high, high. You need to be able to have a basic conversation and teach kids is kind of what Anvetta is for. 
you are taught through the through the Espesas Fal 10 days or however many days your course is in German. They will also explain in English if you ask them nicely. There's a lot of Dutch and Danes often on the courses who don't have a very high level of German, but you do need to speak some German. Right, next question. Level of ski ability, you know, kind of like qualification, qualification criteria. What do you need to be able to do to actually become a ski instructor? So, in Austria, on this system, the first level is the Anwärter. That's what it's called. With the Anwärter, once you've qualified, you can go straight on to the mountains and teach. You're a qualified instructor. It's the equivalent to a level two of Basie. This is the qualification I have. You can do just ski, just snowboard, or dual. Very important to point out, I did not realize this. If you go for dual, to pass the qualification, you have to pass both the ski and the snowboard exams. I went in being a much stronger skier than snowboarder, thinking, oh, if I pass snowboard, that's cool, but you know, I want the ski qualification. You have to pass both on the SPSS Power and Meta system. To pass, you must pass both disciplines. I might have made different choices if I'd known that, but I did pass, so it's okay. If I keep looking down, it's because I've got all my notes here of like to try and give you the best information without being too all over the place. So for the Anvetta qualification, if you do dual, it will be 15 day course. If you do just ski, it will be a eight day course, seven days of lessons and then one day of exams. That's pretty self-explanatory. Longer for both, you get slightly less training on both ski and snowboard, and then you obviously have two exam days. It works out if you're at a good enough level, you just, they're really teaching you. Those days, they are there to help you pass. I just mentioned the qualification, like the guys doing it. I don't know about you, but I had a lot of stories before the qualification telling me they're evil, they're mean, they're like gonna absolutely like push you to the edge. <laughs> Just don't believe it, it caused me so much stress that was unnecessary. Yes, the Ausbilders, so the um, the guys teaching you for your qualification, do want you to be the best you can be and you do need to be good enough to pass the course, obviously, and I'm about to tell you what you need to be able to do. Um, but just like, <sighs> they might be a little harsh, and you know, they might like push you, but it's only because they want you to pass and they're like being helpful. So just listen to them. Don't talk back or whatever, be respectful. Like obviously they're the ones that ultimately choose whether you pass or fail. So <laughs> just be a nice person. They also only want nice people working on the mountains. So um, if you hear rumors about them being terrible people, it's not true. But in terms of what you need to be able to do, here we go. There are both theory and well, there's three exams. You have a theory written exam, which is multiple choice. You have a teaching practical, so you teach a lesson. And then the third is you have to do three more different forefans. So it's three skis down the mountain where they watch you and see if you are good enough at skiing. That is a short turn run, so short quick turns in rhythmic patterns, a long parallel turn run, and a Flugsteuern run. So Flugsteuern is pizza, so you go across the piece and then you pizza to turn and then you go across the piece and then you pizza turn. You have to be able to do that and there's actually a lot of skill required to do that properly and teach kids. So that's probably one of the most difficult ones. Um, for the Anverter, um, you get taught everything from how to teach absolute first timers, babies on skis, to be able to teach um, parallel turns. So be able to take someone from turning in fluke to parallel turns. That's kind of where you're expected to be able to teach to that level. And your teaching assessment, you could be given any aspect. So I, for example, was given the scenario of, you have a group of kids, seven kids, it is their first time on skis, teach a lesson. So I had five minutes to prepare, I got myself some cones, some little toys, and I taught a lesson, you know, one ski on, scoot around, pick it up, jump around, get comfortable, put the other on. In terms of grading, um, the SBSS file system does a five, like, five grades. Number one, if you get a one, you've done incredibly well, all the way to five. Five is a fail, four is a pass. It's a little bit complicated, so one to five. You either pass or fail the teaching, you either pass or fail the theory, the written, 
and then you get the three different runs I've just talked about, you know, the three times in different styles down the mountain, and you get a one to five on those. And then if your your average is over three, i.e. you get a three three five or a one one four, those are both passes, or a two 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 is a pass. If you were to get a one five five, you fail. I hope I've explained that well enough that you've got a pretty good idea of what you need to be able to do. The quote on the SPSSFAL website to say like what level you have to be able to ski to for the anverter, it says, I quote, Sportlig fahren mit Korven und langen Radien auf flachen, mittelsteilen und steilen Pisten. Mindestkönnen. So, translated that means you have to be able to like ski in a sportly, comfortable manner with long and short turns on flat, middle steep and steep pistes and that is the Mindeskunnen, so that's like the minimum requirement. Uh, moving on to kind of the cost, with a lift card included in the cost and a job, kind of like guaranteed, it's 790 euros. That is for the course, that does not include accommodation. Without a lift card, i.e. you already emailed somebody and secured a job, so you have a secured job and you already have a lift pass, the qualification is 585 euros. Please keep watching because I will explain about getting a job next. Um, so just to touch very, very shortly on snowboard and Basie. Snowboard, it's the same sort of process, theory, teaching, practical. The practical three steps are you have to be able to do like freestyle, you have to do a nose tail, a nose and tail roll, I guess. 180 on the piste and go over a box. You need to be able to do um, carve, a carved run, a short and long radius, and you need to be able to do drift turns. So also pretty straightforward as long as you're comfortable on a board. <laughs> Those of you Brits who want to do Basie, there's level one and there's level two. A level one is teaching in a controlled environment. So if you're just teaching in a snow dome in England, you just need level one. But to teach on the mountains, you need your level two. You have to have completed, from my understanding, the level one course to be able to do the level two course. Uh, each course, well, level one course from my research a second ago is about £435, and that's a five day course plus two day first aid course with child protection, etc., etc. And then it's a 10 day course for level two, which is £670. It's actually quite a lot more expensive and a lot more days. Um, again, you need to be able to, I'm reading off my notes, you need to be able to ski in parallel confidently, uh, do short rhythmic turns on at least red runs, parallel long turns on blue runs, and have at least 16 full weeks of skiing experience. For level two, you then now need to be able to do that, plus have another 35 hours of teaching experience after your level one uh, with the ski school. Um, and be able to also ski variable conditions and bumps and like all over the mountain so that includes blacks. Um, as for getting work and also what I do in the summer, so for getting work if you sign up to the SBSSVAL um, Anverta qualification you can actually like tick the dot box that says you need work and they will literally find you and guarantee you work with the course so that's really good on the Austrian system that if you do a you know, July course or November course, you will then have, you will have that work, work that season. So that's cool. Otherwise, just if you've got a specific place, like I did, that I wanted to go work at, email them. Literally, okay, most people will probably, you know, in Austria, take a little while to reply to your email. But they're so lovely. Just, just email, be like, hi, I'm doing my qualification, or I've got this qualification, I'm looking for work, I'm a bright, bubbly, motivated individual. That's how you get a job. In terms of summer, so this summer I was in Austria till March and mid-March, well, like start of March. And then I was meant to have my level three. I was training all season. I was meant to do my next level qualification towards the end of March. And then I had a visa and flight booked to New Zealand. Um, New Zealand is obviously our summer there, winter. And I was gonna go continue being a ski instructor because I love it. And then I had flights visas being sorted to Japan to continue skiing. 
Um, that obviously all fell through, including the qualification and the trip because of Corona. I'm now at university. This is what I'm now doing. Last summer I worked in a garden centre. I have a lot of friends who also work summer seasons. So for example you might do snowboarding, skiing in the winter and then in the summer you could be a windsurf instructor, scuba dive instructor and then finally touching on kit. Um, as far as I'm aware and like everywhere you need your own kit that includes you know boots, skis, you will get given a uniform but you aren't allowed your days off to be skiing in the uniform, so saddle pants, jacket, whatever. Um, I will do a whole video on my ski kit, what I use, what I have, what I pack, because that has also been requested, but this video is probably going to be getting quite long already, and I am in my uni house and don't have all my kit with me. So once I'm able to gather it all and show it, or even maybe I'll, ins maybe I'll make a video and insert photos. Let me know if you're interested and I'll try and put one together, but... Um, most ski schools have like a link with the local hire shop so if you don't have your own kit but you know you're going to be working somewhere or you already say hey look I want to work for you I'm about to do my qualification can you help me out with some kit you'll be able to get some great deals I've blurted so much I know that editing this is going to be a pain but I hope I have shined some light on kind of the qualification process what you need to be able to do to become a ski instructor I will put a link down in the description to the website uh, so you can go check it out look at all their courses when they run and find out more they also have videos on there of what you need to be able to do my camera is flashing battery dying so i'm going to love and leave you like comment subscribe do all those youtube things and i'm going to be making more videos again soon bye <laughs> good vibes yes i want to go back to the mountain i tried so hard but corona fun. Yay.